for you. Hi Dinesh, uh, hi Devraj, Koti, Manikandan, we have Sai who has joined, Venkata here and Vinit Kumar Gupta. Welcome guys. Once again, welcome uh, guys. Welcome to Next IT Trainings, one of the leading training institute for online courses. And today on this platform, we are here to discuss about live and interactive demo session on AWS Cloud Computing with Linux Basics. My, myself, Vimal Singh, and I have 10 years of experience into IT industry. I am currently working as a DevOps engineer parallelly with AWS operations plus Linux administration. Over a period of few years, I have trained almost like 300 candidates through online and offline mode of education. And uh, currently working as a DevOps engineer, as I mentioned you, I've completed my graduation in computer science department I'm a BTEC degree holder. This is my background guys and uh, I would like to know you so if you have a time you can discuss quickly you can try to introduce yourself one by one just say one line of your introduction your uh, education and uh, your expectation from this training. So you can start it one by one if you have a timing. Devraj, Dinesh, Koti, Manikandan, Sai Venkat, Venkat Ayer. You can speak up, guys. Or you have the chat box available. You can use that chat box to introduce yourself. Okay. Can we have a quick introduction, guys? Can you unmute yourself and try to speak? I want this session to be interactive. Koti, can you hear me? Okay. All right. Good. Manikanta has done a take. All right, work in Zoom, okay. That's good. That's good, okay. All right, guys, uh, that was a good. Uh, few of the people have uh, provided their information and their qualification, their interests, etc. So let's start up, guys. Let's start our interactive and live plus demo video or demo session on cloud computing. If I ask you a question, what do you mean by cloud computing? I have seen people having a wrong idea or a wrong definition when it comes to the cloud computing. They are not holding the correct or the accurate uh, definition of a cloud computing. And if I want to define a cloud computing, I have to break this words cloud and computing need to break the words 
So cloud I can define as nothing but a symbol of internet and computing can be defined as uh, a use of hardware resources in order to deliver a particular service. So this is my computing and this is a cloud. Okay. So cloud computing is together acts is uh, defined as accessing the service like storages, databases, networking on internet. That is a simple definition of a cloud computing. Now let us try to understand why cloud computing came into picture. That's today. Now in the screen you can see that there is a cloud user available with a laptop. Assume this is you. You're using this laptop and you will be defined as a cloud user and you're connected to the internet over here and with the help of this internet service you're trying to access the computing devices provided by any other company say in my case it is AWS that is Amazon so you are trying to access the complete hardware resources of AWS with the help of internet that is nothing but a cloud computing now if I ask you a question how will you access your Facebook so how will you do it you will be sitting at your home or else your premises office premises then connect go to the internet open the web browser and type www.facebook.com and you will be able to get the Facebook web page so similarly what you're doing here is that you're trying to access yes I'll get back to you on, on the queries guys I have a few questions from different people uh, let us discuss that once we are done with our session so you will be getting an opportunity to ask the question and I shall respond to your queries let's have a deep understanding about AWS and the cloud computing so I was saying that if you want to access your Facebook you go to your web browser type www.facebook.com and try to access the Facebook web page similarly in the cloud computing what you're doing you're sitting at your office premises and you are accessing you're going to your web browser trying to access the portal of a company say like console.aws.amazon.com and from that console you're trying to access all the hardware devices all the hardware resources this is nothing but a cloud computing now why cloud computing that came into existence to understand that let's go to the next slide this is a typical on-premises data center which is available and uh, if you talk about on-premises data center there are a lot of stuff which we, we have to speak about see first of all you would require servers you would require storage you would require network and an IT labor in order to maintain all this data center all right so these are the expenses you have to bear when you are maintaining your data center like you have to invest huge amount of money to purchase the servers racks PDUs switches for maintaining the servers you also have to install an operating systems you have to purchase a license copy of those operating system and involve a maintenance activity as well now coming to the storage you have to invest huge amount of money in order to purchase a storage disk HVAs SAN FC switches and fiber channels you need to hire one storage admin who can look after your storages make sure that there are no problem with your storage activity in on-premises data center coming to network you need to in much money on networking equipment like uh, switches routers you need to purchase a bandwidth for internet speed and you need to hire one network admin who can look after your network then you need to hire one server administrator virtualization admin in order to look uh, after your um, servers and other infrastructure to maintain all this data center you would require space huge amount of space is required to maintain on-premises data center 
and you would have to arrange a power supply because data center will not function if adequate power supply is not provided. Cooling equipments like uh, air conditioners and uh, temperature detecting systems, etc., etc. So these are the huge investment if you're trying to start up a new company, okay, which will be in you know millions and millions or billions. It depends on the type of uh, infrastructure you are looking to set up. So nowadays what happened is that with the cloud computing option, no company is trying to work on on-premises data center because of these disadvantages. What are the disadvantages over here? Server cost, you need to maintain the server cost, storage cost, network cost, IT labor cost. And additionally, you have to hire different administrators, plus you have to invest money on space allocation, power supply, and cooling equipment. So a huge amount of, uh, amount of uh, money you have to spend in order to maintain the on-premises data center. So due to this reason, cloud computing came into existence. Okay, so what you will be doing in cloud computing, you will be taking all these facilities from Amazon. So you will be purchasing a server from Amazon uh, for about like 0 0.01 cents per hour, okay? Now assume you would require a server for three months. Instead of maintaining into your on-premises, you will do one thing, you will simply purchase a server from Amazon for a period of three months, and you will be paying a money for the three months. If you require a server with a license operating system for a period of one year, you can sign up an agreement uh, uh, with AWS and you will be getting a, a server with uh, like 15 GB RAM or uh, five CPUs based upon your requirement. So if you're looking for high-end configurations, again, you have to pay more for the resources you're trying to utilize from Amazon company, guys. But what the benefit of cloud computing is that you need not invest money on server cost, you need not invest money on storage, network, and IT labor costs. Also, it doesn't need to maintain any space, no power supply required, no cooling equipment required, no server admins, no storage admins, no uh, virtualization admins plus network admins are required. So this is a very big opportunity for the people who are uh, interested to move their infrastructure from a data center, on-premises data center, towards the cloud computing. Now, what are the benefits? Let's talk about the benefits of a cloud computing. Why it is, uh, you know, why people are interested to learn cloud computing or to uh, move their infrastructure to the cloud computing because of these benefits. The first one, it is very secure. All the corporate data or the data on the user is particularly stored into a central location, which is encrypted and which is nothing but a signing process involved. You need to provide your identity if you want to access any kind of a data. So it's a, such kind of uh, security is provided by the AWS. Secondly, software updates are done regularly by the AWS itself. If you are taking a service or uh, uh, functionalities from Amazon, it's a duty and a responsibility of Amazon to make sure that all the softwares are updated. Okay, we, it is not our headache. We will not be taking unnecessary headache to see whether my software is updated or not. Coming to the flexibility and uh, mobility, you can work from any part of the nation. If you are working from USA, I can support uh, you from India. So there is no place restrictions and there is no requirement for you to go to the office premises regularly. You can sit at your home, work on the, the AWS portal, collaborate simultaneously with your colleagues, and uh, location is not a constraint over here when you're using a cloud computing. So even if you get a chance to work in a cloud computing project, you can sit at your home and you can work at your home because the whole work is done on the cloud computing. Then collaboration, you can sync up with your employees, you can sync up with your colleagues, wherever, wherever you are, 
uh, no need to uh, go to your office premises etc it helps control cost guys like for an example if you're using an operating system or any windows operating system or linux operating system for a uh, one year one hour of period then you have to pay only for one hour you need not pay for a complete 24 hours similarly if you want to use a system or a operating system for a period of three months you have to pay only for a quarter of period you not to pay for half a year or a year so such kind of plans are available with aws so based upon your usage you will be charged so payments can be made monthly payments can also be made annually the very big part of aws is that it provides stability because when you are maintaining your on-premises data center it's your job your responsibility to make sure that the infrastructure is not down if the infrastructure is down even for 30 seconds or 50 seconds 15 seconds or even for a single second of time there will be a huge huge loss of the business if it is a production environment so if you're taking that from a cloud computing you need not be worried about it it is taken care by aws and they make it very sure that there is no downtime achieved there is a benefits of the cloud computing now what are the different categories of cloud available to the user communities or the users like this the first one is like a private cloud over here but the word itself you can understand what do you mean by private cloud so here the data that has to be private limited to certain users are stored under private cloud okay facebook.com is not a private cloud okay but facebook.com will be private only for facebook employees okay so if you want to store any data that has to be secured that has to be uh, limited or restricted to authorized users you can use a private cloud and community cloud if you want to create a cloud for some community say like a football community cricket community and a hockey communities a different different communities you can create a community cloud for them now coming to the public cloud public cloud is completely for a public users so like icici.com all the users would like to access icici website so you can try to create one public cloud for, for those kind of users and hybrid cloud is a combination of a private cloud and the public cloud so you can store the private data and additionally you can store public data as well now coming to the service deliveries what are the different service deliveries which which you can see it see if you're maintaining an on-premises data center that means if you're hosting a data center onto your office then you need to be worried you need to be responsible for every single thing starting from hardware say like networking then storage you need to maintain the your servers you need to make sure that the virtualization is working fine. You need to make sure that operating systems are installed with a license one. Middleware applications are installed. Applications are applications like Java, C, C++ are available. And application has been developed perfectly. So from top to bottom, it is the responsible responsibility of the company in case of on-premises. But when you are trying to avail infrastructure as a service there are three services in the cloud computing one is infrastructure as a service where the infrastructure from here to here would be taken care by amazon okay this is a complete responsibility of amazon they will be taking care of the networking they will be taking care of the storage servers and a virtualization the rest of the team which are available in blue color has to take care by the company or by you amazon will not be will not be taking any responsibility for your applications data runtime applications or os installation so you have to take care in case of infrastructure as a service so infrastructure is basically called as all the hardware equipments are nothing but your infrastructures now coming to platform or pass as a service it itself says that we are trying to create a platform for end users 
that means from hardware till the application installation making the, the platform ready for the developers to access the system and they will be writing the codes and develop an application okay from here to here everything will be created to you by Amazon itself you just need to access your computer log into your computer start or writing a source code or a program develop an application that's it no headache the third case coming to the software as a service everything from applications to networking is managed and controlled by Amazon itself okay you need not do anything you just need to open your internet web browser type something say like http.gmail.com you are not doing you're not installing any Gmail software onto your desktop or laptop you're simply going to www.gmail.com writing composing your email uploading attachment and then sending that to your recipients so that is nothing but a software as a service so these are the three services which are available in the market the first one is an infrastructure platform and then software as a service the cloud service vendors there are many cloud service providers or vendors available now just like for an example Microsoft Azure Amazon Web Services Google Cloud Salesforce IBM and then Juhu work online now here we have many options to the users we do have Oracle as well but why shall we go for Amazon the reason is Amazon has the infrastructure that is five times more powerful and five times high heavy than other vendors like Microsoft IBM Google Salesforce etc this is the only one reason people are switching to Amazon or AWS services because they have huge amount of hardware infrastructure or hardware resources now coming to AWS geographical locations is also a reason to switch for AWS because I see here that there are many you can see many uh, geographical locations available on the map uh, this one is for Sao Palau that means this is the name of a region and there are three data centers available here this one and here in Singapore there are two data centers available in Tokyo there is three data centers available in India we have a data center recently established in Mumbai okay and more uh, cloud computing data center about to come so the cloud computing AWS is located across the globe this is also a major reason to switch towards AWS okay now talking about the next thing what is important for you is that you might think that how can you create an account on AWS web services so AWS giving you an opportunity to uh, create a free tier account what do you mean by free tier account you can create a free tier account and uh, you can try to access the services try to see what are the services which is provided by Amazon or AWS for a period of one year however there are certain restrictions as well so Amazon has given you certain limits so you should not cross the limits if you cross the limits probably you will be charged for over limit of the usage or over limit limit of the services so you need to make sure that you are using things under the limit value this is the web page you can use to create an account now moving further the basic things which is the basic prerequisite to learn AWS is the Linux concepts guys it's mandatory to have uh, a knowledge about Linux or Unix because Amazon needs a prerequisite of Linux so during the course content we will be working on introduction to Linux introduction to Unix we'll talk about file system hierarchy basic bash commands editors then partition management then logical monuments uh, and apart from that guys I'll also explain you the real-time project how it is followed or how it is implemented in any IT in, uh, industries okay that will be a real-time 
a scenario or real-time project I'll explain you the next talking about why you have to go for a cloud computing guys today every small company a large-scale company or a medium-scale company or small-scale company they want to they don't want to spend money on unnecessary hardware so they started taking the services from different vendors like Oracle, uh, Microsoft Azure, AWS, Google Cloud, Salesforce, etc. So what's happening? They are saving huge amount of sum. And because of this, it is essential and necessary for the people to learn cloud computing because all the organizations are moving towards a cloud computing platform not moving currently they have already moved on and the opportunities are multiplying day by day day by day they require people who had a good knowledge about the cloud computing who has a good experience on the cloud computing concepts so it is a now it has now become a prerequisite for every one of us to have understanding and on job training or on-job experience on cloud computing topics so you can see it in the from 2011 you, you can see the ratings over here and the millions the figures are in millions so 2011 5 millions and now 2015 it's something where 13.8 millions and now assume it's 2018 now so how much it should be so the role in cloud computing might range from cloud developers to the operators. So we have two types of roles in the cloud computing. One is for the operations and second one for the development or the developers. So it depends on company's requirement. So basically, if you require developers, you would also require operations team as well. And if you require operations, you, should, you would also require developers, I mean the company. So it's a very key time for you, you to make maximum benefit of the cloud computing and then go into the market to grab an opportunity so coming to the topics covered guys as i discussed linux is a mandatory thing to learn aws and we will have at least a week session on uh, learning linux basics and uh, let's open this microsoft uh, document so that I'll explain you what are the contents we are uh, talking about. So here in this one, the course in the, just a minute. Yeah. So in the course content guys, we will be seeing about the introduction to Linux, Linux file system structure, Linux patch commands, editors, partition management, plus logical volume management, shell scripting. Then our sessions for AWS Cloud starts. We will try to begin with introduction to cloud computing. Why do we need a cloud computing? We have seen it in a demo that it is due to the on-premises data center, expensive, Types of cloud computing, public, private, hybrid, software as a services, platform as a services, infrastructure as a services, horizontal versus vertical scaling of the resources. Then we shall discuss about AWS and uh, what are the different uh, AZs or the availability zones, different regions, just like we have seen that there are many regions available like um, Sao Paulo, Singapore, India, USA, Germany, etc. So we'll talk more about the availability zones. Identity access management here, we will be dealing with authorization of the user and group accounts. So that will create authorization and only the valid users will be able to access the AWS portal. EC2 instances, what we are doing here in EC2 instances, we are trying to create and instances with operating systems and like Windows or Linux or Ubuntu, etc. 
So same thing we will be discussing in the EBS, elastic block storage. Uh, here we'll see how to store your data permanently on the EBS volume. Auto scaling, if you want to increase your system from two to four, how auto scaling helps to automatically scale up the resources or scale down the resources. Simple notification service help you to provide a notification in terms of alarm. Uh, like um, if you want to, to know like uh, something say over here, um, your EC2 instance is about to expire and you should be notified for that. So SNS will help you to uh, set an alarm on the particular thing and if something say like file disk is 90% utilized, you can use this kind of services like simple notification service and CloudWatch services. The simple notification service helps you to uh, provide a notification or send you the notification with the help of email or a call or um, any other uh, messenger, something like that. And next, talking about simple uh, storage services, here we have uh, S3 which is a storage service and that helps us to store our data onto uh, the cloud. Just like you, you use Google Drive, that is also one kind of a storage service uh, given to us by the Google company here. Next, moving, moving on to uh, a different thing. Let's talk about uh, uh, CloudFront. CloudFront is just like a cache server if you want to increase the speed of your web pages or websites, then you have to deploy a few cloud fronts in between your uh, uh, source server and the destination server. Storage gateway, it is also a part of a storage where we'll try to create certain uh, files and see whether the storage uh, volumes are cached or not. We'll talk about relational database services and Dynamo TV services followed by elastic caching and very important concept of EC2 uh, that is VPC. We'll, we'll see how do we create our own uh, virtual private cloud and route 53 services. And lastly, we shall discuss about uh, uh, preparing the exams. I'll, I'll forward you certain uh, links which will help you to uh, um, get the good knowledge so that if you're preparing for the certifications, you can uh, clear that with ease. So these are the things uh, I wanted to uh, discuss uh, as a part of the course content, guys. Now, if you have any questions, you can come up your question, you can raise your hands and we will get back to you if you have any. Now, the floor is yours. If you have any kind of a questions you want to ask us, you can use the chat box or you can raise your hands, we will uh, unmute you. Anyone, guys? Anyone? So this is a notification for you. If you have any questions, please raise your hands. We will unmute you. Any question from anyone? Uh, to know the cost of the training, you have to get in touch with uh, the coordinator. And uh, once the session is completed, you will be uh, uh, you will be uh, contacted by the training coordinator, and you can inquire about the fee course and the duration of the course. Anyone, guys? Adhar, Girdar, Devraj Prakash, Koti N, Mohammed Inyad, Prajwal, Sai, Sampat, Suman, Ormila, Venkatayar, Vinit Kumar. Any questions for me? Vinit, you can um, speak up. How can I help you, Vinit? If you have any questions, please raise the questions. Uh, Prajwal here. Yes, Prajwal. Excuse me. Yes. Uh, you just said that hybrid 
cloud is a combination of private as well as public. Yes. How does that work? Like for an example, if I give you an example of Facebook, www.facebook.com, okay? Yeah, okay. So what you do, you just open the internet web browser and type yeah. www.facebook.com. So that's your public cloud, okay? Fine. And how about the internal employees of the Facebook organization? They will be writing certain code, certain applications. Some of them will be maintaining the database services. So will you be able to access the database of the Facebook? No, I'm restricted there. They're restricted. So Facebook can host a private cloud. Facebook can also host a public. So the private plus public is nothing but hybrid. Okay, got it. Say for an example, now you're sitting at your home, you're in yeah. Mumbai, and Facebook.com server is somewhere in USA, assume. Okay? Okay. Now, very first okay. time you're trying to access www.facebook.com, you see a latency of something like two seconds, three seconds, or four seconds, or maximum five seconds. Yeah. Okay. But you just said with, that it's used yeah. for in uh, improving the speed at which you can reach a particular website. You That's said it. that. You yes. No more. I just asked. Yeah. So CloudFront helps you to set up a elastic uh, caching in between uh, the USA server and uh, your uh, user. So whenever you are requesting for a Facebook.com, this CloudFront will reach to the USA, to grab the information, stores the information with it, and then send that to the user. So the next time when the user asks Facebook.com, instead of the USA server replying you, this elastic server will respond to you, which would be very near to your location. If you are in Mumbai, yeah, got it. The, cloud, the cloud front will be in Mumbai. So just yeah, assume how, got much, it. how much improvement in the network latency. Now, got it. Uh, there is one more question from Adar Giridhar. Uh, his question is, can you guide me? I have a five-year experience in desktop support engineer field. It is easily to move in the field? Yes, because it's the right time for you to change your platform and let me suggest you one thing. Um, you can tell, as you have a five years experience in the desktop support, you can learn this course, our computing course, and I shall help you with the live uh, uh, scenarios, what I do in my company. And once you get all those experience, once you become friendly with the AWS services, you can portray yourself that you have worked for uh, a particular company as a where your profile was to manage and control the cloud operations. So you can turn your experience from desktop support engineer to a cloud engineer. So this is a very wonderful uh, opportunities for you. Since you're already into a organization, you can make use of this particular course to a high level. And once the course is completed, we will be trying to work on the live scenarios. I give you certain assignments, which I work in my companies. Some live scenarios will be presented to you so that you can get an idea by and where we are using this AWS in real time. Any questions, guys, further? Anyone? Anyone? Urmila, Suman, Sampat, any questions, Sai, Muhammad, any questions for me, Devraj, Venkat and Vineet, any questions? No questions? Please speak up guys if you have any questions. All right, so if there are no questions, then we are good to close the meeting. And these are the details uh, of the next IT trainings. And if you want to connect with anyone, just these are the numbers available on the screen. You can uh, 
reach via WhatsApp or call. Okay. Okay. Thanks. All right, guys. It was a nice session. Thank you for Thank you. sharing the demo. Have a good day. Thanks.